Champagne bubbles are full of carbon dioxide, a gas made while the drink was being fermented. When the bottle is sealed, the gas stays dissolved inside the liquid. When the cork comes off, the gas escapes as bubbles. The glass they're in has a big influence on their journey. Gerard wants to know how that process starts, how the bubble forms. What, what's this showing us? Yeah, this is champagne, and we have um, a fitted um, microscope objective on a high-speed video camera to see where the bubbles are coming from. And so where are they forming? They form everywhere where a tiny uh, particle or imperfection is. So um, we are going to see this on the screen. Uh, you can clearly see that the bubbles are not coming from nowhere. They are coming from a tiny particle stuck on the wall. And this is um, indeed a, a tiny dust particle. So they're actually coming from specks of dirt? Yes, it's dirt. <laughs> yes, you're right. Gerard had shown that bubbles are born wherever there are imperfections on the glass's surface. And this has surprising consequences. This says to me that you can artificially make places. You could, you could choose that your champagne glass would make more bubbles. When you see such a column on the centre of the glass, is, it is because the, the, the glass has been hatched artificially. So they scratched away yes. at the bottom yes. to make these rough surfaces. Yes, to promote effervescence. By putting dye into the champagne, you can clearly see the effect of scratching the bottom of the glass. It forces the bubbles to travel in a narrow column up the center of the glass. And we'll see that this is really important. The lovely thing that I think that's really clear here is that you can see that the bubbles are starting really, really tiny and they're being released and they're growing as they go up and as they get more and more buoyant, they get bigger, they go faster and faster. Yes, because the CO2 continues to accumulate in, inside the rising bubble, so it grows inside and it accelerates. So in a tall glass, the bubbles travel further and they get bigger and they're moving much faster than they do in a short glass. This has the effect of mixing the drink more vigorously, which in part explains the more intense flavor I'd noticed in the tall, thin glass. But that's only half the story. With his high-speed camera, Gerard found the bubbles do another crucial job in champagne. So here we have um, a high-speed photograph of the champagne jet, which is ejected by the bubble, and we also have a high-speed film of the process. So this is just as the bubble is just at the surface and it sits there for a little while, and then the top, the sort of top of it breaks. Absolutely. And this is what happens Then the, the, the bubble cavity collapses, and when it collapses, it can eject a tiny champagne jet up to several centimetres above the surface. Gerard now went one step further. He analysed the droplets being spat out by the bubbles. The molecules that carry the distinctive aromas of champagne were really concentrated in the droplets. They'd been carried by the bubble, somehow sticking to the bubble surface. The bubbles are carried uh, obviously CO2, but also uh, aromatic molecules stuck on the bubble wall. And when the bubble collapses, it ejects all those molecules above the surface. So this moment here, right where we see the hole in the water, that hole is coated with these molecules. Right. And then when it squirts it upwards, yes. those molecules, all the molecules are, are growing, yes. up into the air. Yes. It's, that's just be I love all this photography, <laughs> it's fantastic. I could watch this all day. It's a very efficient way to transfer uh, the, the champagne into the vapour phase so that you can feel it with, with your nose. What Girard had found in the champagne is a property of bubbles that's really important. As we'll see, it's crucial to our oceans and our atmosphere. Bubbles have the ability to transport substances from within a liquid to its surface and beyond. But why? What's going on on their surface, this mysterious place where gas and liquid touch, that means certain molecules stick to it? It's hard to show because these molecules are invisible. So I've come up with another example. And so what I've got down here is an experiment to show how bubbles can carry glitter. 
And glitter is like those aroma molecules here because it doesn't want to be underwater. If it can find a place where it's touching both the water and the air, it will stick there. Parts of these molecules are repelled by water, so they rush to the one place where there's no water, the surface of the bubble. So the way that this works is I'm just going to take lots and lots of photographs and hopefully one or two of them at least will show the glitter sticking to the bubbles and being carried up to the surface. So let me set this going. So I'm going to push down on the plunger, which is going to send air down here and out through the funnel where the bubbles are. So now I can look at the photos and see if I can see the bubbles carrying the glitter upwards. OK, so here's one. This is really, really nice. There's a big whoosh of bubbles have all come out together, a cluster of them. And you can clearly see that the glitter is just stuck to the surface of the bubbles. And there's actually a little cloud of glitter at the bottom where bits have fallen off. And so they're leaving a trail of glitter behind them as well. So it's really obvious here that the bubbles are carrying glitter upwards. The fact that certain molecules can stick to bubbles is incredibly important and has inspired some very exciting medical research. What we're doing is we're pumping liquid through one channel, gas through another channel, and where they meet, we're getting a bubble. Scientists hope that bubbles will become magic bullets. It's all about the bubble surface. The basic idea is that instead of glitter, scientists will stick drugs there. We're actually attaching a cancer chemotherapy drug right onto the bubble surface. So if you have a drug that's got the right properties, it will stick It'll to, stick the, to the, the bubble. Exactly. It'll stick right onto the bubble surface. And it won't come off until we want it to come off. And how small are these Really, bubbles? really tiny. Their, their equivalent size uh, is a red blood cell, so that they can go through the capillaries within the, the body just that much easier. They won't get filtered out by the lungs. They can go where they need to go, and we can use them for both diagnostic and therapeutic applications. But there's a second really important benefit to using bubbles to carry drugs. They can target specific places in the body. That means the drugs they carry don't affect the rest of the body, and this helps avoid damaging side effects. One really clever way of doing this is for the bubbles also to carry tiny particles of iron so they can be directed by magnets. So this is a bit like that. It's a very sophisticated version of that thing where you get iron filings and a magnet, and as you pull the magnet around, you can pull the iron filings yes, around. Yes, it is exactly like that, uh, except this time we just see bubbles moving as opposed to uh, iron filings. Uh, so you can see at the top, there's a brown layer. So it's brownish because it's like rust. Yes, basically. You, rusty bubbles here. Rusty bubbles, All right. yeah, but they're not bad for you in any way. Uh, and then if you bring a magnet nearby, you can actually see oh, the yeah. cloud actually move down. And then when you move it away, it turns. Oh, they well behaved. Look at that. Yeah. So That's lovely. Yeah. So, these... so, yeah, so you can really push and pull them around. Yeah, but wherever the magnetic field is strongest, that's exactly where they'll head for. Once you put your magnets on the person, how do you know whether the bubbles have stopped in the right place? Uh, so we can actually see the bubbles completely under ultrasound in real time. Uh, so that's one of the amazing things of these. With other drug delivery vehicles, you have no idea where they are. You hope for the best. With this, you actually see them stop. You can see exactly where they are. And then you can actually, um, when you remove the magnetic field, you see them go away. So have you got pictures of that? That sounds fantastic. Yes, yes. So um, on this screen here, we actually have a video I recorded um, earlier on. Um, so this is the tube, mm -hmm. um, the outer wall, and you can see the inside completely empty because there's no bubbles. So this is like a blood vessel, a capillary vessel, yes. somewhere in the body, and the cell's over here, and blood is running. Exactly, yeah. And below here we have our magnet, so it's sitting a bit of a distance away, I think it's about a few millimetres. Um, so when I press play, we'll actually see bubbles then flow in. So things are flowing through the pipe, but we can't see anything. Yeah. And here are the bubbles. Yeah. So you can actually see they're being drawn down towards the magnet, and then on the bottom, you see an increase uh, in bubble concentration. So here's the magnet, and here are all the bubbles that are attracted to it. Yeah. And that would be where your tumour was, or wherever it was that you, you want wanted to treat. Exactly, yeah. If this research works out, one day, bubbles will carry drugs to exactly where they're needed. 
Once there, the final step is to persuade them to release their payload of medicine. And to do that, we exploit the way bubbles respond to sound. When we want to use them for drug delivery, though, we just turn the ultrasound energy up, they oscillate more violently, and the drug is released. So that's, that's lovely, because you sort of... You, you keep them calm, a little while, a little, exactly. little ultrasound, <laughs> and then when it's time, you thump them with sound. Oh, that was a big clap. And, well, that's uh, and actually exactly what happens. Um, the bubbles expand to a large extent, and then they collapse, and it's the collapse that releases the drug and destroys the bubble. So you've got a video of, the, of this collapse process. I do, indeed. So these are uh, images taken at a few million frames per second. Sound comes in, see the bubble expand, contract, and then break open and release its contents. <laughs> That's great. So just like you might be injected in the arm with a, a vaccine or something, this is injecting exactly. the drug into and the fact, body. Bubbles have been described as micro syringes um, because one of the interesting things about this jet is this jet is being emitted very, very fast, and it's sufficiently fast to actually puncture a cell membrane. So the cell doesn't have a choice about this. The cell doesn't really have a choice, no, <laughs> provided the jet's in the right direction. The bubbles provide a fantastic way of encapsulating a drug, so the drug will have no action on the body until it's released. The bubbles keep it it's encapsulated. Packaged. It's packaged, exactly. And more importantly, it's packaged in something that we can track, because we can track where the bubbles are flowing under ultrasound.